First question uh, that was submitted in advance, uh, did the panel agree that the demand for a route has not been correctly assessed as working from home will mean less travel and enhancements of the network around the West Midlands will do more to reduce reliance on the car? Uh, Martin, as you spoke about uh, Birmingham specifically, maybe that's one for you. Yes, sure. cities to the north of Birmingham rather than to London with which we are already well connected. So again, it's, uh, the first one was about our, our regional links, this is more about our, our city to city links. Uh, Christian, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, okay, can I just, I just <laughs> add something there about the previous point, which to emphasise what it means if you don't take into account the fact that you work on trains is that at the moment, the time that you save uh, from your train journey is a positive thing uh, in terms of the business case. But if you actually work on trains, the time saving evaporates and therefore it undermines the whole business case. Very important point. Um, improvements to uh, outside, uh, to, to north of here. Um, look, I think this comes as part of a wider point, which is if I had, if I was railway czar, and, uh, uh, and I had 17 billion to spend on the railways, I would not be spending it on uh, building a high speed line. What I would do is I would spend it much more boringly, much more banal ways, but improving the commuter services you get in, in Birmingham, improving those you get uh, in Manchester, in Leeds, and indeed, yes, building a proper line uh, uh, across the Pennines, uh, improving uh, you know, commuting in London as well, uh, building lots of tram systems as they do uh, in, in Europe, and not spending all your eggs in one basket, let's do this one big thing that looks as if we're doing something, but actually it will turn out largely to be a white elephant. Well, just on, on the question, um, there are benefits from uh, connecting Birmingham with Leeds, Sheffield, Manchester, Liverpool, and so on, and uh, that's largely what the second stage is designed to achieve. Um, so it's not as if uh, it's not been thought about. You could turn around and say, well, why don't we do that first? Um, I don't think it would uh, make as much sense to do it first, and you probably simply work through the logic of that, what we're going to end up with is actually a lot of trains uh, running from the north to the Midlands and then finally they can't get to London. But I'm sorry, I can't let this stuff go <laughs> about working on trains and I'm 
going to say something absolutely genuine for people opposed to high-speed rail. On this particular subject, you are really wasting your time. You no doubt got some good arguments, but please stop running this one. Read the document. If you can find anything wrong with the department's argument in rebuttal, and Gringo has tried to rebut it earlier, then fine. But basically, the uh, issue of tackling the, the fact that people can work on trains, yes, you can argue it's simply for the simplified in the analysis, which Christian has already told me is too complex already. You could make it more complex. But you've got to allow for the fact that if you add capacity, you reduce congestion. If you reduce overcrowding on trains, you make it possible for more people to work. If you put in a much better service, which is what high-speed rail does, to some extent, you might say, well, not very much, I would say uh, one, in, one in seven or eight travellers are going to be new to rail. They travel by modes of transport where, honestly, it's either very difficult or impossible to work. Where's the benefit of additional productivity in the analysis from those people? Answer is nowhere to be seen. The department's done sensitivity on this and said, well, let's suppose we do, did look at this in a more sophisticated way. And the net answer is the business case would go up, not down. So please don't waste your breath on this particular argument. Okay. <laughs> In advance is specifically for Jim, but obviously give one of the answers the opportunity to respond as well. But Jim, this was uh, asked specifically of you. You say there are no alternative ways of increasing capacity and connectivity with such a benign impact on greenhouse gases. So HS2 is also the most sustainable answer. But what evidence do you have to support that? Or do the other panelists agree? Well, I base that on. Um the work that Green Gage commissioned uh, was a major piece of work which showed that with a high-speed rail network covering the country, and not just London and the West Midlands, greenhouse gas emissions would go down, uh, despite the fact that uh, and there are many more longer distance journeys being made by rail, because of course there are a large reduction in the number of long distance journeys being made by air and by car. Um, now, um, you can't uh, uh, think of every conceivable alternative, but the, the options that have been looked at have been expanding the road network, expanding the existing rail network, you can stick a couple more tracks on the side of what you've got, um, and those do not have such a good carbon impact, so that's what I've based it on. And the reason they don't is because they don't achieve a shift from the most carbon intensive mode to a less carbon intensive mode, which is high speed rail. I mean, that's, that's why you get a, a benefit. Now, people say, well, there's nobody flies from Birmingham to London. True. But they do fly from Scotland to London. There are over 50 flights each way a day. They do travel from Manchester to London and Leeds and Newcastle. Well, they don't Leeds because the service is gone. But they do from Newcastle. Now, these are flights which are short haul and can be replaced by high speed rails. They're very carbon intensive. Uh, and that's part of why I think it's, it's a good thing. And when the department very cautiously does its analysis on HS2 and says, well, even after allowing for embedded carbon in the construction of this scheme, and that's a good thing that they've looked at that, projects have never looked at these things in the past, it's quite right with them, and that's now being taken seriously, even allowing for an assumption that the level of carbon in electricity production remains the same, which we all know it can't, it's going to have to get more benign, they come up with a, well, it's on balance carbon neutral. Well, in my book, it would be more realistic, but hey, this is the problem for transport, to look at what other government departments say is going to have to do energy mix, take that into account, and you would find a reduction in carbon even from HS2. And as you go further, it will get better. I'll give you a response. I have to. Um, let me, uh, in a moment, respond directly to, uh, to Jim's points about short-haul short rail. But first, I need to reiterate that if we're talking about a railway that is going at speeds of 360 kilometres an hour, that is 
much worse in carbon terms than classic rail or the pendolinos uh, that, we, that we have now. Secondly, let me reiterate that the projections are that of travel on HS2, new journeys would account for 27%, i.e. In increases in travel, switches from classic rail would account for 57%. If we then take the, uh, the issue about uh, short haul uh, journeys, I think if we're wanting to think about that, we have to think forward a little beyond a simple statement that there would be carbon benefits if HS2, uh, or indeed a wider network, takes travel off short haul uh, flights onto rail. Because what would be likely to happen if that were to be what would be likely to happen is that, that would, the, the reduction in short-haul flights from other parts of the UK into Heathrow would free up slots at Heathrow, which would then be taken up by more long-haul travel. And it wouldn't be surprising if this was something uh, that, uh, that Heathrow would be, would be quite keen on. And of course, what would that do? That would add to carbon not reduce it. So I think if you follow through the issue about uh, short haul journeys, you come to a very different conclusion. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Uh, those are the proponents uh, of that. Um, I think we have a couple of volunteers, have we, with the uh, microphones? There they are. Um, if one could patrol one side and one could patrol the other. Uh, there's a chap just at the front here who's had his uh, hand up for a while. The chat with the suits and the time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could I express a disappointment to start with? I had hoped we'd have. Would you mind to uh, yes, turn it to you? Nigel Cripps is my name. Okay. Um, a disappointment in that I, we've only got one expert who has local knowledge. Um, to me, the alternative to high speed rail. Oh, so what do you think would be unfair to me? Is there a local university? Oh, okay. The Warwick, and I went know. to Warwick University as well. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll back off. The point I'm going to make is this. At the moment, I've not heard anybody pick up on the alternatives to high-speed rail in terms of releasing capacity in the classic network. We clearly need to address this. There are papers that are available, integrated transport authorities produce, uh, Green Gauge would produce the stuff in modern railways this time, where you can see that there are spectacular gains which are going to clearly benefit this local area. Decent services down the west coast to the smaller towns like Northern Kings. Issues like getting Kenilworth railway station open, four trains an hour. Can't do it at the moment, country's too clogged. I've not heard anybody yet explain to me if you're going to attempt to do that sort of thing without building HS2, how are we going to do it? Bear in mind the disruption that we had to West Coast Main Line when that was four-tracked. I don't think we're, any of us will be very comfortable with having that level of disruption on our local journey to work services, which I guess we would have to have to achieve the local move that we want for local transport, i.e. more trains, better services locally, if HS2 is not built and we have to do it on a classic network. Thank you. So, uh, sorry, sorry.